Hi guys, welcome to this PlumberParts.co.uk video, one that I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. We are at a house of about, I think it's about 18 radiators here, and we're gonna use this MagnaCleanse AD Beast to clean it up. I've also got my FLIR thermal imaging camera as well. So in this video, what I want to do is not only go through the sort of process that I do when I'm doing a cleanse, the chemicals that I use, because we're gonna be using AD's MC5 cleaner to be our sort of rapid cleaner that we're gonna put into the system. And then we're gonna dose it up with MC1 once we're finished to ensure that there's no more sort of bad corrosion occurring within the system as well. So let's have a little look around the system. I'll explain what we're gonna do. I hope you enjoy the video, guys. Let's just get on with it and I'll see you soon. Hold tight. Right then guys, so we are in the salubrious surroundings of my mate's garage. This is a big house, there's about 18 radiators here, like I said. There is a MagnaClean installed, which is going to help us do this cleanse. But if there isn't one installed, you can still do it using the MagnaCleanse. It's no big deal, okay? There's a few little things we're going to go through in a minute. Number one, like I said, MC5 cleaner, okay? This will do about 10 radiators, that's how I work on it. Because we've got 18 here, guess what? I've got two tubs of this to put in. And it's the same for this as well, MC1 protector that we'll put in at the end of the job to make sure that we keep everything as clean as how we've got it today after we've cleansed. We've actually got our MagnaCleanse, I just call this the MagnaCleanse manifold box. The ones we're gonna be using, because we've got a MagnaClean in here already, you're gonna be using this manifold here. And then we're gonna be using the two push fit whites as well, because they'll slot straight onto where we've actually installed our MagnaClean. Makes it really, really quick. You've got 28 mil connectors on here, and also you've got Pro 2 XP connectors. But you know, with a little bit of now, so you can basically get onto most things like pump valves, or even if you want to make up your own little manifolds, you can actually put these onto radiators as well. There's no big deal. Because we're flushing on the MagnaClean today, I'm gonna to take these two off now. There's a little rubber O-ring in here. We're just gonna pop them directly onto this now and just get these tightened up and on. A lot of houses now have MagnaCleans in them anyway, so some of you guys are probably just gonna leave your setup like this ready for that eventuality. Now let's have a quick look at the fun part of the box. Twist cap, pull up, and then you'll get that to lift off like so. <laughs> I just love these. Kept all my gubbins in here. This is actually a brand new one that we've got in here at the moment. Right, number one, just in here, we've got ourselves a little radiator agitator. A radiator agitator. It goes onto an SDS bit on your SDS drill, and we'll be using this later on to shuffle any real stubborn bits of magnetite about. Then we've actually got the beast itself, so I'm just gonna pull them out, and then just sit them in here like so. And there we go, all ready to go. I mean, if you've got any problems with leaks or any bits and pieces like that, it's going to stay within our box area, you know. But if we do have any problems, no harm in just shoving a towel around where you're working. So we've got our little magnet ratchet here. Oh, I call it the magnet ratchet. It's just what I'm does in magnets. And we lift this up. And there we go. We've got one of our massive magnets there. Whatever you do, don't take two of these out together and get them stuck together. They are so hard to get apart. We've got two of those. And then behind me, we've got two hose lengths, about two and a half meters each. And also a little drain cock on here as well that we'll be using later on. So guys, let's have a quick look at the system as well, how we've got it running at the moment, and get set up to actually do our cleanse. So then guys, a quick description of the heating system that I'm working on at the moment in this lovely cat infested garage. We've got our MagnaClean here coming in on the return into the boiler like it should be. As you can see, we've got an oil boiler in here, just a little ground vortex, and there's our flow out. We've got an S-Plan heating system, with a zone for downstairs, a zone for upstairs, and also a zone for our hot water as well. The hot water coil has valves on there for us to actually properly valve the coil off. So we can run some of our cleaner in there for a little while. So then we can shut the coil off and really fly loads of cleaner around the actual main heating system as well, which is really, really handy. Guys, what I like to do as well, when I get to a new system, is just valve off our magnet clean very quickly. There we go, so we just loosen that off. Now we should be able to see how much dirt this has caught over the last sort of year or two since it was last serviced. Oh, look at that. So there we go, we've got a fair bit of magnetite in there. We'll definitely be clearing that off in a minute before we put that back. Ooh, nice. So we know that we've got sludge present in the system. Fortunately, our MagnaClean has been protecting the boiler from all that. But what about the radiators themselves? Right then guys, we've had a look at all our components. We know where we're gonna be installing our MagnaCleanse because we've got a MagnaClean over there. So what I'm gonna do is isolate the heating system, turn everything off, 
isolate the MagnaClean on the little MagnaClean valves, whip that out of the way. Then we're going to use our manifold that I've already got built up here ready. It's push fit, so we're just going to push that on, but we're also going to use the little retainer as well that the MagnaClean has. So when we finish the job later on, we can use that to pull this off really easily and restore the system to how it was before. And also we'll go over dosing for our chemicals in what stages we do that. So our valves here are both in the off position. So then we'll pop this back on, line these two up, push them all the way home. Now we've got our manifold on, we follow the instructions to properly pipe up our magnet lens to the system. Right, so number one guys, make sure that your return pipe, which on this system is this pipe here is coming in here. What we're gonna do, we want this pipe here to be the one that goes to the bottom first entry of our magnet lens, but also it wants to have our little drain off on here as well. So, very, very self-explanatory way of installing these. Pop all the way home like that, and then pull both the toggles up at the same time to lock in position. And that's it, that one's on. So there we go, now our manifold is installed, we're ready to actually pipe up to our magnet lens. Right guys, remember what we said, we want our return to be coming in this one here, okay? We've got our little drone off just here as well. Also, try and think about which way your valves are gonna shut because you're gonna have to build these bits up when you actually buy this. But once it's done, that's it, it's done forever. So it's a very simple procedure when you buy these first time round. You have your rubber O-ring that sits on here. Just take note of the indentations on these so they fit inside this properly. Then our actual spigot goes over here like so. Then all this is sandwiched together nicely like that. We just undo our toggle. Pop it on back there like so. And that is that bit done. If you actually look inside the valve here, you'll see that we've got a little rubber O-ring in there. What I like to do is have your valves always facing upwards. If you want to, you can PTFE this thread if you like to make sure that there's, there's no leaks, but really you shouldn't have to. I'm just showing you the procedure that I use for actually building the little valves. You'll only ever need to do this once. Once you've got this done, you'll leave these like that in your van. There you go, that's ready for us to use. Right guys, make sure your drain off's pointing down and that it's outside of your little box here because otherwise it'll just get in the way. Now we are ready to add our MC5 cleaner to the system. So like I said, I've got two bottles of this to put in. Seriously easy to dose the system now, ready for this. We're just gonna pop open one of our magnets. I just wanna point out to you as well, look how clean this magnet is. Hopefully, when we finish later on, they will be, well, very dirty, hopefully, with all the stuff that we've got out. So just whip the top off. Make a complete pig's ear of it like I just have done there. And we're just gonna tip that in there like so. So there we go guys, we've got two thirds pretty much full there of MC5, so we're ready to go into the next stage. Right, so once we've got that, we're just gonna pop our magnet back in here. Just gonna make sure these are just nipped up tight. Right, so our return is coming in here. It's been filtered through that, through that magnet there. It goes down into this bottom bit here, gets filtered through this magnet here, and then goes back off into our boiler and then subsequently around the whole heating system. I'm gonna open up my return first. Filling up with water. Right, so we've got our return open. If we open this now, water would come out of there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open this bit here. Okay, you see that? We've got a bit of a glug. Cool, and then what I'm gonna do, we're just gonna vent this quickly, make sure that we get rid of all our air out of here. So we're just waiting for this to come out. So we look back down here, look, you can see we've got water now in here and that's now filled up. We don't let much of that out because obviously we've got our chemical in here. Well, now what I'll do is before I open this valve here, I like to let as much air out of this one as possible. So this should take a little while longer as well. And there we go, that's now full. So what we do, just gonna open this valve up here, just like so, and we should see water come rushing through this pipe. I'm just gonna let the air out just like so, there we go. Right guys, so at the moment the heating system's off, I don't know if you can see, look the difference in colour we've got here. This is our chemical that we're about to shoot back into the boiler and off around the system. We've got a little bit of it still sat in here, but these two pipes are now full. The Magna Cleanse is now sharing live water with the system. Right guys, so we're gonna get the system running now. I'm gonna put the heating on to all day. So that's on now. What I'm gonna do for a minute or two is I'm just gonna shut the valve on the coil just down here. So that's closed. I'm gonna put the central heating pump to maximum. So we're gonna be really wanging it around. And then I'm just gonna pop back through here. We should open up our lever valves. Hi Heidi, say hi to everyone. Hi. Right, so now that's all running, we should be able to open this up and find water just whips around here like mad. Here we go. Hey, look at that. We are running our water through the system, filtering through, 
Could maybe just let a bit of air out here, just make sure. So there we go, guys. We've got our chemical in there now. We're getting the system so it's actually running. It's up to temperature. Um, we need the system to be up to temperature because we want the MC5 to get hot. Then it breaks down the stuff inside the radiator a little bit quicker. What we break down out of the radiator will come through and have to pass over these two filters. And in the time that it's in there, we're going to be able to catch it onto those filters and then it won't go back into the system anymore. So that is the whole point of what we're doing. MC5 can be left in the heating system for up to seven days. So you can literally go, oh, here we go. Getting me quaffy. But you can leave it in for a minimum of an hour when it's running up to temperature. So this is the setup we've got for the system so far. All the radiators are open. The coil to our hot water tank is shut. Our bypass valves are shut. We are forcing water around as much of the radiators in the heating system as possible. We've got our pump turned up to maximum because I want to rush it around the whole system really, really quickly. We've got all our valves open here. We've got our chemical in and literally it's just a waiting game. Fortunately, I've booked in two other jobs to do while I'm here. Um, one of them actually now is to quickly clear out the magnet clean that we took off earlier on. So I'm going to give that a quick clear out. And also I've got a toilet flush to do as well. So while this is rushing around, I'm going to go and do that. You know it's not going very well when you have to remove the whole toilet just to change the flush. Thank you, previous scumbag, whoever you are. I hope that you realise what you've done and that you should pay the ultimate price. So I've cleaned out our Magna Clean, I've done that toilet flush. It's been about an hour and a half now. Toilet flush was a nightmare. I want to leave everything in here for a little while longer uh, before we start doing our agitating and before we start isolating down to certain radiators to clean them out. Now there are a few advantages that I find we have with this kind of way of doing things. I have got a power flusher as well and they tend to put systems under pressure. And I have had F and E pipes usually with pinholes in them in the lofts pop and you just look like a melon to your customer really when that happens. It just tends to be a lot more of a dirtier setup. The good thing I love about this box is that you can put everything in there and it's all just self-contained. You can leave that off around the boiler and if you wanted to, you could leave it here for a few days so you get a really insanely good filtration. The big thing for me is it doesn't put the system under pressure. Um, if you've got like mini ball systems or anything like that, or you've got lots of pipe work in screed floor, that's kind of the sort of thing you want to avoid. Um, also, you can run the system up to temperature nicely, get the chemical working really well. A minute ago, I just whipped this off and just had a look at the magnet. It's already starting to get quite a fair bit of magnetite on there as well, so really going well at the moment. We went around earlier on with the flare camera and had a look at everything. There's definitely some radiators that are struggling to get fully hot all the way through. So now we're going to go through the procedure of agitating the system and making sure that everything's okay. <laughs> Quick thing I want to say about the agitator itself, obviously if you've got like a radiator that looks like it's not going to take the hammering action of an SDS drill, uh, this has got like an enamel coating on it, then don't do it. What I usually do is get something to cover it over, a bit of an old sock or something like that, just to stop that real banging on there. Um, make sure that your SDS drill is set to just hammer, not rotating hammer or rotate, just hammer. So it's on like the chisel one. The next thing I want to talk to you about is if we look at this schematic drawing that we've got here, what we're going to do is we're going to close every radiator off apart from the ones that are furthest away from our Magna Clean. We're going to leave the heating system running, we're going to leave the pump running, we're going to leave all our valves open and we're going to leave our chemical in. But the first thing we're going to do is go around and switch all the radiators off apart from the furthest one away. So that's down the boiler end of the house. This is our furthest radiator. So the way we do this, and the great thing about the flare is you can figure out exactly which way your flow is coming in from. This is the only radiator open on the system now, so we're putting full pressure through this one radiator here. I don't know if you can see there, but we've definitely got a patch kind of here. Our flow's coming in, it's going up to the top and across, but it's not heating all the way along the bottom here. So we know that we've got a little bit of a problem here. Hopefully we'll be able to get this out. So like I said, we've got our SDS drill here with our little specialist AD agitator on here. It's set to just chisel, so it's just moving forward and backwards. Um, I have got myself a little bit of tissue that I just sort of pop over the end just to protect it a little bit more. We're on about vibrating here, we're not on about smashing the radiator to bits. So do you think the radiators are gonna be able to withstand the hammering? And also, have you got a good enough trigger just to keep it like running nice and low like that? You don't wanna be going just, just enough, you know, just like that, it'd be great. And 
working your way back to the actual return to the boiler. So that goes back down to our magnet and gets caught in there. What I say as well is that AD recommend that the radiators be half full for you to do this. But on a job like this where there's 18 rads, it's kind of unfeasible for me to go down and drain out all 18 of them. It'd just take absolutely ages. So uh, we've got full radiators here, uh, but we've got such a great amount of flow in here. And also the chemicals so good and the magnets are so strong, I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to catch everything that we're going to get out of this radiator anyway. Another thing I'd like to say as well is if you've got a double panel radiator, try to just get the agitator under like that and then push through a little bit and you should then be able to sort of get the main bottom channel, which is often where most of the blockages actually occur. Now that we've done that, oh my God, look at the hat. That is 100% baking hot, so that is going really well now. Look how white all that is. White hot radiator. I've got another 17 radiators to do and you guys definitely don't want to follow us around doing all that. I think you've guessed the procedure. Once you've finished on a radiator, shut that radiator, then go to the next one, open that up and then do the same procedure. If you've got your flare there, you'll know that you've got everything working okay. Once I'd done all 18 radiators, it was back down to the garage for the final stage. <laughs> Guys, once we've got all that done, we're pretty much at the stage where we want to do our cold flush screws, like the rinse. First thing to do is switch off the boiler. If you have to switch it off at the time clock, make sure that after you've done that, you latch open any two port or three port valves so we can do a proper rinse through. Then what we do, we go over to our manifold and we isolate the manifold side that's nearest the boiler. So what we're going to be doing now is dragging water through here from the actual system. Because this is a gravity fed system, we'll be dragging water down our gravity feed through the boiler, then off to all the radiators and everything, and then back out down to this pipe here, and then off to our little drain off here that we're going to run outside in a second. So I'm just gonna pop my hose on here like so. Remember, before you go into the next stage, isolate the boiler and also turn off the pump as well. You may have to latch open uh, any two port or three port valves too. Now at this point, if you're on a pressurized system or, or you've got a combi boiler, you'll dissipate the pressure out of this little valve here and make sure that all the pressure sort of drop down. Now this is a gravity fed system. So what we do is we open up the lever valve that is the feed pipe from the tank. Make sure as well, if you can, go up into the tank and just make sure it's nice and clean because we don't want to be sucking down loads of dirty water into the system that we've just cleaned as well. And often it takes a few minutes just to whip the tank off, drain it out and just give it a proper hose out outside. We've got all the radiators shut apart from the one that's furthest away, the one that we started with. Next thing you do is you open up this valve here and we start to let water out of the system, okay? Now, as this is a gravity fed system, this is gonna to automatically top itself up. But if you've got a pressurized system, you're gonna find that you're gonna to need to open up the filling loop to replenish the amount of water going into the system. What we're effectively doing is looking to flush all the water out through that one radiator. We should be able to go up there in a minute and find that that radiator has gone really, really cold. Once it's really cold, we know that we flushed it through and then we can just go through the same steps again with all the other radiators, flushing everything out as we go along. So guys, what we're effectively doing now is we are pushing cold water down from our F&E tank. It can't go anywhere else apart from that one radiator at the end. And then it comes all the way back through into our manifold out the hose pipe here. So we know that we're flushing out any of the chemicals that we've been using to do this job so far today. Once you've done that, you're ready to shut off this drain here, then open all your radiators back up to normal system. Then we can move on to the stage of removing our magnet cleanse, dosing the system and leaving it in full working order. Ooh, there we go, right, all done. I'm now just going to shut this valve here and I'm also just gonna shut every valve that we've got on the system. I'm also going to unlatch any two port valves or three port valves that I've latched. Uh, and basically we are now going over to a stage where we're gonna use this special little tool here to clean out, and this is wicked this is, the little magnets that we've got in here. I'm actually gonna disconnect the manifold and put the magnet clean in now, and then we'll give this a clear down. I wanna show Chris exactly how much stuff we've taken out you know, and just being happy about it. Hey. <laughs> right, so moment of truth, like I said, we've got two of these to do. Wow, look, hey, look at that. That is, that is impressive, really impressive. Oh man, oh, it's the most satisfying one of these, one that's doing this, because you just know the customer's gonna be like, whoa, you took all that out? I mean, to be honest, it's not 
I've seen worse, okay? I've seen worse. But this system is one that has had an inhibitor in it in the past. It's just I thought well, this is probably a bit of a dirty beast. We've sealed and reinstated the system. We've inhibited the system with two tubs of MC1 protector. So now we know that we're doing our utmost to prevent any more sludge occurring or any more rusting because we've put inhibitor in. If we put everything back to how it was, we've opened up the radiators again. We've turned the thermostats down because it is summer at the moment and they don't really want all the radiators on. And then we've taken these magnets out and we've cleaned the system out and removed it. That is literally 100% what we've done in the process over of about three or four hours. Let's take this outside and scrape off all this sludge. Then I'll tell you how you can win a Magna Cleanse through Plumber Parts. So homeowners, engineers, apprentices, whoever's watching guys, I hope that's given you a really good idea about how these Magna Cleans work. How about you have a chance to win one of two of these beasts? I've got two Magna Cleanses up for grabs and I'll also chuck in a PP t-shirt as well. There are two ways to to enter on YouTube to enter you need to subscribe to Plumber Parts like this video and also comment why you think you should win in the comment section below or to double your chances pop over to our Instagram at Plumber Parts follow us at Plumber Parts comment on this post here like that post and then tag someone who you think is as dirty as that system was this competition is only open to inhabitants of the UK and it runs out on the 21st of July 2018. So if you're watching this video after that time, then I'm afraid guys, you've already missed the boat. But don't worry, we do competitions all the time. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching guys. If you need any more information, then pop over to AD's website. I've left a link to that in the description below. See you in the next video guys. And remember to hold tight. <laughs>